The fact that a person has the stigmata is not complete assurance of the sanctity of that person. Scripture tells us, For there will rise up false Christs and false prophets, and they shall show signs and wonders, to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. Magdalena de la Cruz was an example of such a person. She bore the stigmata, but the stigmata did not come from God. She was a Franciscan nun who was the abbess of a convent outside of Cordova, Spain. She lived from 1487 to 1560. For many years, Magdalena de la Cruz was honored as a saint. She was believed to have the stigmata and to take no other food than the Holy Eucharist. The Blessed Sacrament was said to fly to her tongue from the hand of the priest who was giving Holy Communion, and it seemed at such moments that she was raised from the ground. The same miraculous levitation took place during her ecstasies, at which time she was radiant with supernatural light. In 1527, Magdalena's habit was sent off to Empress Isabel, the Queen of Spain, so that the Queen could swaddle her newborn son, Philip II, in it, in order to protect him from evil. There were a couple of notable people who were suspicious of her. One was St. Ignatius of Loyola, and the other one was John of Avila. Blessed Juan de Avila, one of the directors of St. Teresa and a profound master of the interior life, never faltered in his opinion that these trances and the stigmata were of no heavenly origin. John traveled to the convent in order to investigate the claims, but he was turned away by the nuns. However, in 1543, Magdalena fell dangerously ill. Fearing death, she confessed that some of the apparent miracles were faked, and others came from demons who possessed her. But, instead of dying, she recovered, so then the matter was turned over to the Inquisition to investigate. Montague Summers, who admittedly isn't the best source, quoted an older source from the 1600s, to save her life, she went to Pope Paul III as a penitent and confessed her sins and said that at 12 years old, the devil solicited her and laid with her and had laid with her for 30 years. Yet she was made the abbess of a monastery and counted as a saint. And she confessed that the devil, among all people, brought Christ's body, the wafer, to her mouth, none seeing what carried it, whereby she was taken for a saint, as if the act had been done by some good spirit. It was not, of course, the consecrated host which the demon conveyed to the wretched woman, but an unconsecrated host. The matter had such notoriety and was so complicated that it took the Inquisition three full years to investigate the matter. She was finally sentenced by the Inquisition to perpetual imprisonment in a convent of her order, and there she is believed to have ended her days most piously amid marks of sincerest repentance. According to the Inquisition's report, some of her supposed miracles were fakes. For instance, other nuns gave her food while she pretended to subsist on nothing but the Eucharist. However, she also confessed that she was possessed by two demons, Balbin and Petorio. She said that she prayed to them while giving others the impression that she was speaking with God. As a sign of her bondage to them, her little fingers stopped growing. That manifestation was seen by others as a sign of her holiness. Once when she was in the choir, a demon came to her in the shape of a dove and spoke with her about certain things. She told the nuns that she was speaking with the Holy Ghost and they were amazed. Most importantly, she claimed that her stigmata was given to her by the demons, who she said crucified her in her cell. She wore an opening in her tunic in order to show people the wound in her side, which she did in order to be viewed as holy. She later said that the stigmata disappeared the day she publicly confessed her sins. So in summary, the stigmata is not always a sign of sanctity. In great saints it comes from God. But in most cases, it's just fakery. But as we learn from the testimony of Magdalena de la Cruz, it can also come from the devil. So what was the goal of the demons in possessing this nun? Were they hoping to get one of their servants canonized by the church? Fortunately, this incident occurred when the church still had the Inquisition and other institutions in place to prevent such a thing. So perhaps the demons had to wait three or four hundred years to accomplish their goal. This is the first of two videos I'll be doing on Magdalena de la Cruz. There is much more to her story. In the next video, we'll compare and contrast her to Sister Faustina, and we'll see just how much they had in common. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back again within a week with another one. But in the meantime, please check out my Facebook page and my Twitter page. Every day I post additional content that you won't find on this YouTube channel. And also, please pray for the church.